Okay, I feel like <laughs> I wanted to film real quick because I have somewhere that I need to go in another hour and a half and it stopped raining so I thought it would be a nice timing to film but no, it it's raining again so I have no idea if you can hear the rain or not I really hope you can't and I'm just gonna try and film this however I can honestly <laughs> because I've been planning to do this video for a while hey guys it's me I now welcome back to my channel with another video so for today's video I kind of want to do the mid-year crisis book tag that I've seen other booktubers are doing Basically, the mid-year book tag is that they share the best and worst books that they've read so far in 2020. And I kind of want to do that, but not exactly that, if that makes sense. Because I kind of want to share with you guys all the books that I've read so far in 2022. And did I say 2020 just now? Okay, whatever. But basically, I want to share all the books that I've read so far in 2022. And I will share you guys which of the books that I've read is the best to me and is the worst to me. So that's what this video is about. It's going to be like a very short review for each book that I've read. So I hope this video is not going to be too long to film and edit. <laughs> so yeah, just enjoy sit back and enjoy and you know hear me rant some of these books because some of the books i really hate so be ready <laughs> the first book that i read for this year is called passion from lauren kate and this is from the fallen series so i kind of want to like review and tell you guys about the fallen series first because if not you won't understand this book. So this is the first book that I read in 2022 and this is the second book. Both of these are from the Fallen series. So the Fallen series has four books which is called Fallen, Torment, Passion, and Rapture. I started reading Fallen actually when I was 14, 15 in high school and I remember it like I was so into this storyline because at that time I think the famous um, story or like trope was vampires, demons, and fallen angels because I think at that time the mortal instruments also like the movie and the books were pretty hype at that time. I don't really remember, I may be wrong but yeah I read this when I was in high school but I never completed the series back then. So last year, at the end of 2021, I decided to buy the whole series and I finished the whole series. I actually don't know how to like summarize the whole story without really spoiling the whole storyline for those who haven't read this series yet. The first book is basically about how Lucinda Price met with Daniel Grigory and she has this deeply strong attraction towards Daniel and she's trying to understand why am I so attracted to you but then she found out that she and him are kind of like soulmates and she's fallen deeply in love with Daniel and she found out that there's this curse that she has and how she wants to like understand deeply about herself about this curse and about her life because every time she gets too close to Daniel, she will die. So I hope that's not a spoiler. But yeah, every time she gets too close to Daniel, she'll die. But she will be reincarnated seven years later, if I'm not mistaken. So just to like put a foundation of the whole series for you guys. And I hope that's not a spoiler. By the end of this first book, she is being hunted or like this one organization is trying to get her killed so Daniel and his friends are trying to protect her so that's the first book and going into the second book 
she is being protected in Shoreline, which is the second school that she has been moved to because the evil organizations, evil angels basically are trying to capture Lucinda and try to kill her. And at the same time, she's being apart with Daniel for like 20 days because that's the days that Daniel and Cam, which is another character, are like having a truce for. So by the 20th day, the truce will be broken. But I don't remember what happened on the 20th day. And in this story, she's trying to understand like, why is Daniel keeping a lot of stuff from her? Like, why can't he just tell her, like tell her the whole truth? Like, why is she cursed? Why is she being like this? why do they have to suffer so much in just trying to be together so that's basically the second book in the end of the second book she kind of did something drastic i don't think i should tell you guys because that will be a major spoiler of the ending for this book so yeah the ending she did something drastic which she basically she just traveled somewhere so that's all i'm just gonna say in the third book is interesting and I honestly out of all the four books the third book by far is my favorite book of the Fallen series because it's interesting like how it's told is going back in time so like I said in the end of the second book she traveled somewhere so in the third book she actually travels back in time to her previous lifetime it's really interesting because you get to see Lucinda in different like different versions of Lucinda. So there was this one moment, like one lifetime where she was Chinese and even her names are all different, but at the same time, it represents her. She goes back in time to the main or like to the first ever life that she was brought to. And honestly, it was really like this third book and the story i was really shocked at the ending or like the few end chapters i was like damn i did not thought about that or like i wasn't expecting that to happen or this to become like this or like for this character to evolve into this so it was really shocking for this book and that's why i really liked the third book better. This is the first book that I read in 2022. The second book that I read is Rapture which is the final book of the Fallen series and honestly there was a major um I'm not sure if it's in the last third book or it's in the fourth book but there was a major freaking plot twist that I was not expecting and I was just like damn like what the hell and it wasn't like a bad plot twist, it was just like very shocking plot twist that I didn't see it coming. But at the same time, the hint of the plot twist was actually scattered throughout the whole four books. And it was just there this whole time. It's just that I didn't see it or like I, I didn't even notice that hint of the major plot twist in this book. And I was like looking back and thinking back, I was just like, damn. How can I not see that? The fourth book is about, I think, how they have to save angels because like I said, she went back in time. So something happened in the third book that had to do with someone so bad at trying to like retell the story. Something happened in the third book that, re that involves Lucifer. Um, yes, Lucifer, Morningstar, the devil. So something happened with Lucinda and Lucifer and what was going on. So in the fourth book, um, Lucinda and her whole gang of angels have to go to this place to save these other angels. And I can't tell you who these other angels are because that will basically spoil the whole storyline. The ending of the story was quite... it was like beautifully sad because sad in a way that you know the story is basically ending and beautiful because it's about Lucinda and Daniel of what happened in the end so to me I find the ending quite beautiful and sad at the same time that's the Fallen series I have no idea if I explained that correctly but if you guys want to know what this book is about just google it it will have more 
thorough and good explanation than I did. So, Fallen series. So, the next book that I read for this year is Midnight Monologues by Carissa Ong T. This is a poetry and short stories book and is the first one that first book from this author. There are a few poems that I like and a few poems that I kind of dislike. I enjoyed the short stories and I enjoyed the poems in here. Um, as you guys can see, I kind of like, oh, you guys can't see, but I did tabs the ones that I like. For example, I like the poem called A Warning, Ice, Water, and Vapor. Um, wait baggage i really like baggage i don't really have anything much to say about it but it's a really nice poetry book if you guys ever want to give like a short read so let's move on to the other book that i've read in 2022 which is the invisible life of Addie larue if you guys notice i'm looking this way is because i'm looking at my ipad for my reading list because i can't remember which book i read so I read this book in March also and this was quite a quick read like I thought it would like I would have the whole month to read it but I think I read this book in a week so to me a quick read is finishing a book in a week okay so about this book if you guys haven't read it it's about Addie LaRue and she is practically invisible because when she was about to get married with someone she didn't felt like going into a marriage life she wants to be free she wants to be who she is like unbound and unchained by anyone just to herself she made a deal with a god and apparently that deal turned into something different turns out she is immortal and that whenever she meets new people, after that, people will forget about her. So, for example, if she, like, meets a new guy and they went out for a date or for coffee, the moment they split their ways, the guy will completely forget about her. And if she starts to, like, go back to the guy and, like, talk to the guy, the guy won't remember her. So, it's like she has to restart this whole getting to know each other all over again. So it's quite interesting. Since this is my first book from V.E. Schwab, I can say that I have fallen in love with her writing style and her writing structure because honestly, in my opinion, I feel like there were um, a few or like a lot of poetic elements in my opinion. So like some sentences, some words, some paragraphs, I feel like they were quite poetic in my opinion. So. I really enjoyed this book and I wished I could reread it. I kind of want to reread it, but not right now because I have other books that I want to read. But in the future, I may reread this book because it's really good. Since I started reading V.E. Schwab and I was like really interested in her writing style and her stories and her like mind basically, that's what led me to buy her other books, which is called this Savage Song and Our Dark Duet. So these two books are from the Songs of Verity. Oh no, Monsters of Verity. Oh my god. I've been trying to remember the main name of the two books. So it's called The Monsters of Verity. I actually have nothing to say. I really enjoyed these two books and the storyline. I actually, like, I just love her writing. I love her writing style. I love how this world was about monsters and like how they're trying to come together and you know make sure that their basically their home doesn't fall into chaos. The first book is about Kate Harker and August Flynn. Um, they're both of them are heirs to different side of the city. So Kate Harker is the heir of Callum Harker who controls North City while August Flynn is the heir of um, Henry Flynn, which is the, um, who controls the South Side or South City. Yeah, they are trying to, like, August Side, they're trying to create peace with the North City, but North City, like, Callum doesn't want that. He wants to control both the North and the South, but, um, the Flynn Task Force will not let that happen so you know they're basically at war with each other 
and August kind of like befriended Kate and how their friendship evolves is quite cute and like really interesting also to read about their friendship and how they evolved in the second book. Their friendship was really nice. I like the little game that they have playing to make sure that both of them are completely sane of what they were going through. The second book, um, finally the war did happen or like they did have fighting scenes but there wasn't much fighting scenes as I was hoping for because that happened like few chapters at the end and to me I kind of felt like the ending was quite rushed or like quick paced because I feel like she could have written like V. Schwab could have had written a third book where all of the ending happened but there was no third book it was just a duo so yeah um that's about the monsters of verity these two are really good. Let's move on to the next book that I read. I think it's in June. And surprisingly, I read a lot in June. So I was quite shocked at how much books that I read in June. The next book that I read was kind of for my work. So these three books, I think I read at the same time. Not really at the same time. Like I read in the same month. So I read three books... Okay, you know what? Never mind. Forget about the months. But these three are the next books that I've read in 2022. So the first one is A Strange and Wicked Magic. Um, it's a poetry and short stories book. This one, in my opinion, I feel like if you guys want to start reading poetry, especially in Malaysia, if you guys want to like read simple and like understand really nice structured poetry, I would say give A Strange and Wicked Magic a read because it's really good in my opinion. It has all of the poetic elements because some poetry books that I've read doesn't have the poetic elements that I think poems should have. So that's like a whole other topic that I wish to talk about in a video if you guys are interested in that. This book, it has the poetic elements, it has rhythm, it has deep meanings, it has imagery rhyming it has flow so in my opinion it does have the basic poetic elements that a poetry book should have at least it's quite simple to read quite easy to understand and yeah i really enjoyed this book i love the author's writing style i feel like how he rhymes and like structure his poems is really good yeah strange and wicked magic it's really nice give it a read the other book that i read is called queen of tiles no, Queen of the Tiles. This is also from a Malaysian author. This is also from a Malaysian author. Carissa Ong, Midnight Monologues, also is a Malaysian author. So this is the third Malaysian author that, I'm, that I've read. So Queen of the Tiles. This is a mystery novel. I feel like it was written really well. The storyline, the flow, the mystery, the thrilling. Like, it's quite thrilling also. And... At the same time, like when I was reading through this book, it kind of, there was a moment where I felt like I was being Sherlock Holmes or like pretending to be Sherlock Holmes with the main character. So Najwa Bakri, um, that's the main character. She was grieving from her best friend's death, Trina Lowe. That's not a spoiler, it's literally at the synopsis. So her best friend Trina died during a Scrabble competition. And she was deeply thrown into grief. So after a year of not being in Scrabble competition, she finally tries to like get back into her life. And she uh, attended the Scrabble competition in Johor, if I'm not mistaken. Turns out uh, Trina's Instagram account suddenly started posting things. And people were like, who's posting on Trina's account? Isn't she dead? So, and it, it turns into a whole mystery of like, oh my god, Trina's death is not an accident. Or like, uh, you know, like someone murdered Trina. So, throughout this whole book, you're like trying to understand like, is this an accident? Or did she really just die because she was suffering from something, a sickness? Or did someone really try or did kill Trina. The interesting thing about this book is that the author, how she uses 
each word, like each Scrabble word, it relates to the storyline. For example, this is one word that she uses to describe a character, but at the same time, that word also relates to the storyline and the mystery. So I don't know if you guys could understand that, but if you guys read this book, then you would understand what I'm trying to explain. This book is really good. I really enjoyed the writing and knowing how good the writing is, I'm actually looking forward to like buy more books from this author. The next book that I read for my work technically is this short poetry book. It's called Words You Whisper by Ellen Koch. And remember I said that there's books that I hate? So to me, this book is not a poetry book. The pieces in here, I don't see them as poems because in my opinion, and to be honest, the poems in here lacks all the poetic elements like there's no structure there's no imagery there's no use of any rhyming schemes there's no it doesn't show what type of poem it is like stanzas or um what do you call that quatrain or any style or type of poetry it doesn't show that's one of the main reasons why i dislike this book so much is because it doesn't have the basic or like foundational poetic elements to call it a poetry book or to call these pieces poems. To me, the writings in here are just like normal writings. Like it can be a prose, not so much as poems. Because when you say poems, people would think that, oh, they're rhyming and there's like in-depth meanings or like there's structure. But I don't see those elements in this book. Another reason like if I can like refresh my memory on why I don't like this book is like I said the poetic elements and second the writing here is very straightforward and literal. Maybe to some people when they read it they'll you know easy to understand but it just removes the unique quality or the essence of poetry. It doesn't it's not too literal for people to read. It has to be um, it has to have like a double meaning or an in-depth meaning or for people to break down these poems and to like finally understand like oh this is what the poem means or like oh this is what the writer is trying to say but for these pieces it doesn't have that it doesn't make a reader break down the poems and I feel like that just removes one of the unique quality of poetry <laughs> and honestly you guys these pieces they do have potential in becoming poetry or like showing that these are poems. It's just that the writings need to be restructured a bit and to structure it into a poem. Like it doesn't have the basic elements of poetry. And okay, I found it. Okay, so this poem is called or this piece is called I See Emotions as Colors. Red is for strength, orange is for warmth, Yellow is for happiness, green is for healing, blue is for peace, indigo is for wisdom, purple is for love. I like to paint a sky full of rainbows. Like I said, the pieces in here, it has potential in becoming a poem. So if this author were to like restructure it a bit, instead of like telling people, oh, I see emotion as colors, why not, you know, like, oh, the red roses give strength. Like, how to say like, Pair it with something natural like red roses, the orange or like the, um, what do you call that? The sunset sky, you know, and change it up a little bit. Like, like all of the colors in the rainbows, the rose, the rose, uh, I can give like a better example, but I'm trying to like, you know, think my way through here. So for example, if she were to write, I seek strength. In the roses you've given me. I could feel the warmth of the sun as it blares in the sixth afternoon sky, for example. You know, like change it up a little bit, put some natural elements in there, like pairing it with some natural stuff like rose, sky, wind, or whatever, and you know, use the main points like the colors 
and then show that she sees emotions as colors. That's what I mean when I say that these pieces have potential into restructuring as a poem. Yeah, I just really don't like this book. It it does it is not a poetry book. The pieces in here are not poems. You can call it like a book of writing, a book of quotes, a book of not even prose, but like, you know, it's just a compilation of writings. It's not poetry and I know poetry is subjective and it's like how people you see it like how you see it then that's how you see it or like sometimes other people see it as this that, that doesn't necessarily mean everyone has to see it like that I know that but you know it's like for example if you want to build a house you need to build the foundation you can't just straight away put a roof when there's no walls you understand like for me my opinion and how I feel about poems and poetry is that even for a normal basic poem still needs the poetic elements to differentiate a normal piece of writing like a quote or an everyday journal to a real poem that shows the poetic elements and shows the art of poetry okay wait let me just reiterate myself so what i'm trying to say is that you need to at least have the basic elements the foundational you know part of that art. The next book that I read is also another poetry book from Zach Shah called More Than Words. This is his first book that he published, poetry. It's just a poetry book, there's no short stories in here. So again, this book is quite nice and simple for people to understand if you ever want to try reading poetry and especially like Malaysian author. So it's really nice. I don't have anything bad to say about it or it's just good. The writing is good. The structure is good. The flow is good. Um, I, as you guys can see, I have tab a lot of my favorite poems in here. So, More Than Words by Zach Shaw. So, the last two books that I currently read or like finished in 2022 is The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King. So, I actually already made a reading vlog slash book review for these two videos so you guys can just head over to that video if you guys want to know about this book and my thoughts and feelings for these two books so yeah that's basically it all the books that i've read in 2022 so far um okay my favorite book for 2022 so far would obviously be this one the invisible life of addy larue my least favorite books is i think you guys can already guessed it of course it's this one where's you whisper um yeah <laughs> and i think the other least favorite book that i did not enjoy is um i would say the cruel prince because i enjoyed the wicked king more than I did for The Cruel Prince. And if you guys are wondering why, go watch my book review for these two books, then you'll know. Currently, just want to throw it in there. Um, I'm reading this, A Deadly Education. So be sure to like check out this video when it's uploaded. I have no idea when, but yeah. <laughs> So that will be all for this video today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and me kind of ranting about some of the books here. Um, I hope my explanations are not too messy for you guys to understand. If it's too messy for you guys to understand, I'm really sorry. Just Google the books if you guys want to know about the books and like the reviews. But yeah, I just wanted to hop into the book trend of the mid-year book tag so that's my mid-year book tag please do subscribe if you guys haven't give this video a like if you guys enjoyed watching this um comment a book emoji if you guys have reached to this far so that i know you guys finished watching this video if not it's fine um yeah follow all my socials and i will see you guys in my next video Bye! <laughs>